Good day, this is Brer Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Diggery. That means that I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. I noticed that during this holiday season, season, a lot of people are a little frustrated because they can't do what they normally do. You can't go out, they can't go shopping, and there are lots of things that you cannot do. But what can we do? We talked about the Corona Pfizer from the Vatican. It's a unique unit, something that got into a decoding machine, actually. Like I said, it is a decoding machine, but what does it really decode? See, we are looking at the Ten Commandments today. I realize that some people are a little flustered because they say, well, what in the world are you talking about? Is Jesus a Christian? Well, if you go and check out any information on a Bible school or seminary, they will admit that Jesus is not a Christian because Jesus was the first person that enacted the will of God. See, God is law. For most people, they've never really considered what God was, who God was. They just know God is a power. He is there. He is infinite. He has He's all over. He can see you wherever you are. Those are the statements that I was brought up with. But what is it? What does it mean? Is Jesus a Christian? Jesus is actually not the proper name. It's Jesua. And I understand that with our worldwide knowledge we have gained around the world, we speak different languages that at the time that the Greek were in power, a lot of the material got translated instead in the Roman language. They got it from the Aramaic Hebrew into Hellenistic. A Hellenistic translation was important. That was Greek. If you spoke Greek, you were an intellectual at that time. But Greek has also a limitation. The Greek is a language that doesn't have the depth and the power of the Aramaic, the Hebrew, the old Hebrew talk, the way of talking was the powerful language of God Almighty. So if God spoke in Aramaic and we are translating it first in Greek and then from Greek into English or other languages, you can see that we are losing power. And that power is what I want to go back to. So this the Gronovisor from the Vatican, from the house of the Pope, because he is supposed to be the head of the Roman Catholic Church. But what happened during this holiday season? Everyone starts to feel good. It is Christmas, the spirit of Christmas. But what about the spirit of what was really meant to be? The Ten Commandments. Because Jesua didn't stay a little baby. He grew up and he became a man. But during that time of him growing up and becoming a man and him bringing the sacrifice to open that connection between God and mankind, in other words, restorative justice, there was a decoding of the Ten Commandments. And one of those interesting things I find so fascinating because I got touched by the law. My life got changed and turned around. I have been in the eyes of so many people a person that you could not deal with. I was in a very tight spot with the law and I got involved in something that was not funny. They took everything away from us in the process. But you know what happened was I got set free from norms and I started to understand that the people that are not familiar with the Grono Pfizer that is actually a sort time machine where they could go back in time. The Grono Pfizer is actually not a virus like some people like to believe, but it is more a tool. It's the best kept secret from the Vatican for 1200 years. 53 miles of books, shells, they were just loaded with information. And among them, they kept the books of Jesua. Yes, folks, the Ten Commandments, the books written by and around the time of Jesua when he lived. Isn't that awesome? And that is what I want to talk about.
Have you ever doodled in your life? In other words, you had a pen and paper in your hand and you were just fiddling around and something came out of it. That is how I feel. I am now in my seventh decade, going on my <laughs> 71 a, a birthday next year. And I feel like I went through an exciting period of my life, traveling, learning, meeting people, settling in Canada, starting a family, seeing my kids grow, and then becoming successful in certain areas of my life where we got all the goodies, the big house, the cars, the flying and everything. To be stopped in your track because you stepped on somebody's toes. And when I say somebody's toes, it happens to be the Freemasons. The head of the Freemason was a friend of mine and I told him I declined his offer and he got so furious about that and he said, I will show you how much power I have. And from then on, I understood if you are a Freemason or P3 or P2, whatever Templar you call yourself, anybody that works for the Freemasons, to me, you got to be very careful. Because I know some of you mean well, but the majority of people, they will discover that if you go in the Grono Pfizer, going back in time, going back to the original, what did Yeshua say? He didn't talk about being a believer, becoming a Christian. He wanted us to be the followers of the way, the truth and the life. And so when we go and see in the Grono Pfizer that there was a black Pope and there were Freemasons and P3 Masons and Jesuits, that is the creation of an image of the church that many people are scared for. And that is why I want to go back to the Ten Commandments. You see, the Ten Commandments is something that is so powerful if you understand what it means. And let's go and find out what that really means. The beauty of the law it was planted to reward the children of life with healing an abundant peace with life, with fruitful seed of everlasting blessings and eternal joy in immortality of eternal light. That is what the Ten Commandments stood for, folks, and nothing else. See, the scary part is when we don't have the full picture, we get ourselves into a position where we must agree that we don't have knowledge. When we have a lack of knowledge, that is detrimental. And this is what I learned as well. When I was in court, I am not a lawyer, but I spent uh, 18 years in court, of which 12 years without lawyers. That means my wife and I had the self-defense, meaning defending ourselves without professional legal input. I had a knowledge and basic knowledge about the law, insurance law, which is completely different, international law. But criminal law was something else. And so we had to learn to speed read, quickly pick up the pace, but understand what evidence was and precedence. And as I got to understand and was taught by judges, the comments that they made, decisions that they made, the sentencing that they did, I learned to understand the difference in evidence and precedence. A precedence was set by another court case that was similar to yours. Therefore, you could stimulate the direction of the thoughts of the judge. Also, if you have evidence proving your case. And so we go back to evidence because evidence is the strongest proof that the reality is maybe skewed because what we see is what we think. And that is why it is the way it is. But if we have a piece of evidence in our hands that tells us it is different, we now come to the understanding we have been wrong and we have, we have to change our way of thinking. For some, that is called a paradigm switch. And I found it very hard for myself to change my behavior. If I thought a certain way, I stuck to it because it is a lot easier. And going back to the Ten Commandments, I was always led to believe that the Ten Commandments were the only commandments. But did you know that before we got the Ten Commandments, we got the covenant agreement with God? And why covenant agreement? Well, very simple. When Adam and Eve failed, 
to follow the directions of God. They did not know that when God spoke and created them to be eternal living beings, they could not continue to live in the knowledge that they sided with Satan. So he had to stop that, kick him out, out of paradise temporarily, and set up a plan to redeem them which he did through the Jewish people. He found a man, his name was Abraham, and Abraham really cared about the Lord and God, and Abraham became friends. Then eventually out of that, Moses was the group. He was the leader of a group of people that were in Egypt, and Moses was supposed to let them out. Let my people go. We all know the wonderful words, Moses, Moses. And so Moses was a man trained like a king, understood the law, was a fighter, had an insight, but he also became a man of God. And you know how he became a man of God? Because he recognized he was a prodigal son. He had killed somebody with his bare hand and he fled in the desert, ashamed of what he had done and maybe afraid of what the Pharaoh would do. And in that situation, that position that he was in, almost no way out. God said, come, and you will speak for me. And as Moses started his training, it was 40 years when it happened. Then it was another 40 years in the desert. He was 80. And then God said, now you're ready to go. And he gave him the Ten Commandments, covenants first. But the covenant was for the children of light, so that they would have a law that was planted to reward the children of light. But when they did not accept the commandment, or sorry, the covenant, God gave them the Ten Commandments. And now they could choose life and they could choose death. See, when we get the covenant agreement with God, it is very close and similar to commandments. But when it is a covenant, that means there is an agreement between God and us that we will follow the Lord and he will protect us. When God says when we sleep, he will make our sleep peaceful. When we have joy, he will explain that that joy is our victory because without joy, we won't be able to meet with God. And you say, well, where do you get all that stuff from? The beauty of it is God still opened the door for us, but we need to understand and we need to make the decision that maybe for many, 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 many centuries we've been hoodwinked. Folks, I am not proud to admit it. I spent hours and hours, hundreds of hours, even a couple of thousand, I don't know. But the reality is I was frustrated, flustered. How come that while I have all this in my hands, I have to let go? And then I came to the understanding that it was based on lies. Because if you go to the Gronovisor from the Vatican, you will find out that Yeshua was a normal man. He was not a god. The god that you follow is called Serapis. That god was created around 325 before Christ. And they called the people that followed Serapis Christians. That has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And so when the emperor of Rome decided in 325 AD, after Jesus passed on and moved on and the disciples were just about all killed, he now had a decision and a degree that meant he had a law and he said, you folks, you are now going to be Roman Catholic Church. I am the head, but I may appoint that guy there, the Pope. He's the head and the Pope will make and the following happen. No longer on the Sabbath, but on the Sunday. Why on Sunday? Because I pray to the sun. And I'm a Christian now. Okay. Why did they say okay? Well, the other choice was, or you go in the arena and we hang you up upside down, or the lions eat you. Which one do you want? Well, I'm a Jesus believer. Good for you. And we make it the Trinity, because the Trinity is what all the pagans believed, and therefore the Trinity was easier to comprehend for them. And since they had killed off most of the Jewish believers that understood the law of God, that you never, ever, ever, ever leave the law of God because God is law. Do you understand what I'm saying? When God is law, that means that when you defy him, automatically you're called 
to choose for death. And when we submit and surrender ourselves to God and say, Father, forgive me, and become the prodigal son or daughter, now we have an opportunity to make clean the slate, to make it right. And that law was planted to reward the children of the light. And the children of the light are the ones that are following the way, the truth, and the light, folks. Now, I know that some of you guys are, ah, you know, who cares? But I tell you one thing, if you stand in front of a judge, sometimes one point only is all you need. I lost my case. They sentenced me for six years times three. But I won on appeal. You see, there is also a law that says if a judge was excessive or the judge did not apply the law right, and me not being a lawyer, I learned all those things in a hurry. Because if you are sentenced for five, six, or seven, or ten years, you didn't kill anyone, you didn't have an intent to do anything wrong, you didn't want everything done by the law, and yet you still got sentenced. Don't you want to learn the law? Don't you want to learn more about this? To live a successful life, a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of happiness, and a healthy life for 2021? Folks, it is possible, but you got to learn to accept the fact that maybe what you have been told was not right. And if I'm wrong, contact me. If I'm right, contact me, because I love to hear what you have discovered, because it is not important what I do. It is important what you do, because it's me and my house. We shall serve the Lord. I wish you a very good day. And I hope that yours will be prosperous and healthy for 2021. God bless you. And remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do.
Oh, oh, oh.